What up, Net fans? Nets boy here bringing you latest in your Brooklyn Nets news. A lot of things to discuss today. A lot of things. Uh, could try to get through this as fast as possible. Uh, first off, back to the retro New Jersey Nets hat. Reason? Who cares? I don't know. I just felt like putting it on. Um, second of all, the season is over. Regular season is over. Um, and the Nets managed to accomplish everything that I didn't want them to do. Except for... Well, they're playing the Raptors, which I'd rather them do, and they have a second-round matchup with the Heat, which is what I wanted. But they decided to suck pretty badly down the stretch. You know, understandably, Jason Kidd was trying to arrest players and, you know, um, get the ideas you want to, you know, have your, you know, all your star players and all your players rested for the playoffs. I get it, but they ended up losing four of their last five games and plummeted from a potential a chance to make the four and three seed all the way down to the sixth seed. And they only won 44 games, which to me is disgusting. I said anything under 47 or anything under 46 is a bad season because to me, you're not a true playoff team unless you're at least 10 games over 500. But maybe you'll give exception to the East considering that four of the eight teams are worse than that. Um, the Nets ended up 44 and 38, which I guess... From where they were when they were like 10 and 22 at one time, I guess you would take, definitely take that if you're a Nets fan. Personally, I really wanted them to at least have 46 wins. I thought that was certainly possible, but the way that they ended the season losing four of their last five games, including losses to the Magic, to the Knicks, to the Hawks, I mean, you just cannot let that happen to the Cavaliers. But I also understand Jason Kidd was resting players. They didn't have a full team in any of those games. I get it. Whatever, I'll overlook it all if the Nets win in the first round. But the Nets have a uh, first-round playoff matchup against the Toronto Raptors, in which they split the series. Um, I feel good about that. Uh, you know, Toronto is definitely a really good team, but there's something to be said about them. They don't have the experience in the playoffs. I think that's why they're going to lose. Um, I'm, not only the fact that I'm rooting for the Nets, I'm going to pick the Nets in that series. I'm going to go over each playoff series, too, and give me my picks. But uh, before we get to all that, it's the end of the season. I'm just going to give a brief overview of what I my, what I took away from this for, um, season with the Nets. Jason Kidd. After writing a song about how much he sucked and how much I wanted him fired, I have to say I was very pleasantly surprised at the turnaround of the Nets. I think a lot has to do with him. And you know what? I'm buying into him as the coach. I think he did a very good job. I think he should be a Coach of the Year candidate. Won't win it, but I think he should be a candidate for it. And you know what? Good job, Jason Kidd. You proved me and a lot of people wrong. So that's all I got to say there. Uh, kudos to a lot of good players on the Nets. John Livingston with a great season. Alan Anderson, who was signed as the 15th man, was very good this year. Mason Plumley, a rookie was very good. Toledovic had a breakout year. Everyone really played well. The only player that you could really say did not really reach what they were supposed to be was Darren Williams, but that was kind of predictable because with all the other pieces. I know Garnett took some time to get going, but he's only playing like 22 minutes. You know, Paul Pierce basically gave everything I thought he would. Joe Johnson did what I thought he would do. You know, the only real disappointing player, and he wasn't even that disappointing, was really um you know, Darren Williams. He just took him some time to get going. You know, I think this Nets team really is the third best team in the East. They might be the sixth seed, but I definitely think they're better than Toronto. Chicago, maybe not so much, but I do think they're better than Toronto. I do think they're better than Washington. Chicago is kind of close there, and I think that they have a good shot at making things interesting in the East. So, overall, despite going 44-38 and 38, me having higher expectations, if you remember the beginning of the year, I said they were going to win over 60 games. I said 55 to 60 games. Wow, was I wrong on that one. But whatever. That's going to be a prediction probably next year. Who knows? But um, I was wrong about a lot of things this year. Which is, you know, don't get used to that world. But uh, so, you know what? Overall, though, I'm satisfied. Um, but I'm not thrilled, and I'll be thrilled depending on what they do in the playoffs. So let's go ahead and let's look now at the playoff picture in both the East and the West, and I'm going to give you my overall picks and uh, who I think. Well, actually, no. Before that, let me just give you my awards, who I think should win the awards, because everyone has their own opinion, and I figure, why the hell not? Uh, let's start with Defensive Player of the Year. I don't really have a preference in this. 
Um, the, the front runner is Joe Kim Noah. He probably will win it. I kind of like uh, people who steal the ball more and are good on the ball defenders like a Chris Paul. So that would be my vote. But I think Joe Kim Noah is going to win it. But my, So my vote will be Chris Paul. I think Joe Kim Noah will, would, would win it. Though I think Sean Livingston should get some recognition because he had a great job defensively this year. Um, let's see next. Coach of the year. I would say Jason Kidd for what he did and watching him with the Nets. It's going to be Greg Pop- Popovich. Like, it's going to be Pop. It, it's, that's pretty straightforward. But my vote would be Jason Kidd. The other awards. Most improved. The front runner in that is Anthony Davis. I would probably give it to Anthony Davis as well. I'd be tempted to give it to Gerald Green and Kyle Lowry, but I think Anthony Davis, the way he took his game to the next level, that would be my vote for most improved. Rookie of the year. This is a tough one. I want to give it to Mason Plumlee because I'm, you know, Nets fan, like, obviously. But he's not going to win it. It's got to be probably Michael Carter-Williams. Victor Oladipo has a shot, but I think Michael Carter-Williams is going to be the rookie of the year. Um, but I would vote Mason Plumlee, but I'm biased, so whatever. Uh, so then, sixth man. Here's where it gets interesting, in my opinion. The front runner, there's a lot of good sixth men of the year candidates. Um, the front runner is Jamal Crawford. I would vote, and this is someone who hasn't didn't get any votes by the experts. They went online, and really it's because people are stupid. Oh, what a surprise! Nets boy, the guy who goes out there and says that Vince Carter is the most underrated player in the league. Uh, yeah, but Vince Carter averaged 12 points a game this season. You know, over three uh, rebounds, over three assists, shot 38 percent from three, almost 39 percent from three. And you know what? In the, he played only 22 minutes. Jamal Crawford, who's the front runner, averaged 18 points, two assists. I mean, excuse me, two rebounds and three assists. Played in 30 minutes. You have to look at the minutes. When you're a sixth man, you have to look at the amount of minutes. Yes, look, you can say what you want. Jamal Crawford averaged 18 points, most out of anyone off the bench. But he played eight more minutes than Vince Carter. Vince Carter played in eight more minutes. He'd probably average 16 points a game. You see what I'm saying? I think Rodney Stuckey is someone who's going under the radar too, but I think because the Pistons had such a bad year, no one really cares. He had a good year too. So I would vote Vince Carter. I would accept Jamal Crawford. I think he will win it. I think Taj Gibson definitely deserves some recognition. He averaged, I think, uh, 14 points and, and, and I think um, six rebounds. You know, um, and, Andre Blatch. Andre Blatch. Andre Blatch could deserve it. He averaged 11 and 5. But I, my vote will be Vince Carter, and I think it's ridiculous that he doesn't get any recognition in this at all. People just completely overlook him. The fact that this is – he's he's the third best player on the Mavs. You know, the Mavs won 48 uh, games this season. I mean, 49 games this season. Excuse me, 49 games this season. Same record as the Nets last year. This is a team, and he's the third best player. It's Dirk, Monte Ellis, Vince Carter. Who else? Sean Marion? No. Who else is it good on that team? Sean Marion's one of the most overrated players now. He's a defensive stopper. He's terrible. If you ever watch a Mavs game, he's a defensive stopper, and people dribble past him like there's no tomorrow. Vince Carter's the third best player on that team. He's a guy that, to me, is a crucial for them to win. He needs to score 10 to 20 points a game for them to really have a good chance of winning. But whatever. That's my vote. It'll be Jamal Crawford. And then finally, the MVP award. Hands down, Kevin Durant, 32 points, like set over 7.8 rebounds, 5.6, it's just, it's over, it's over. Shout out 50%, it's over. Kevin Durant. So those are my awards. Experts picks things differently, beside the point. Those would be my awards. I don't know if I'm missing a, a category. I think I got them all. Um, so that's that. So now, I'm going to quickly go through each playoff matchup and what I think is going to happen in the series, in both the East and West. Um, let's start with the East. No, let's start with the West. Let's start with the West, because that's the, in my opinion, the more uh, interesting, yet the one I care least about. The first matchup, San Antonio Spurs against Dallas Mavericks. I'm rooting for the Mavs, obviously. Vince Carter, Mavs, I'm rooting for it. Do I think the Mavs have a chance of beating San Antonio? No. I'm going to say San Antonio in five. It's as simple as that. Personally, I'm going to be straight up honest. I'm going to pick the Spurs to win the whole thing. They're just, it doesn't make sense how that team is so good. They rest their players and they, and like, they'll rest Tony uh, Parker and then Patty Mills will go on and score 38 points. 
Like, they always have people stepping up. That team is just so put together. It's just, they're going to win the whole thing. Dallas, I'm rooting for you. I'll be so happy if you somehow up, pull off an upset, but I'm going to say San Antonio in five. That's just, it's pretty straightforward. I'm being generous letting Dallas win one game because that's going to be tough too. Well, let's look at the second matchup, OKC through, um, versus Memphis. This is going to be a good one because the front court of the Grizzlies are going to cause problems for the lack of front court of the Thunder. This is, I think that Memphis has a shot of pulling off an upset here. That being said, I'm still going to put Oklahoma City in six. They have the better team. They got the best player, second best player, best player this year in Kevin Durant. And if Westbrook stays healthy and everything clicks for that team, they're going to beat Memphis. I think it's going to be a good series, but I'm going to put OKC in six. Now it's the battle of the scorers, the Clippers versus the Golden State in the 3-6 matchup. It's going to be, this is going to be one of the more exciting series in the sense of a high-intensity offense, a lot of threes, a lot of dunks, a lot of all this stuff. Um, but the Clippers are just simply the better team. They are. And I think it's going to be a good series, and I'm going to say it's going to be six games as well. But when it's all said and done, I mean, the Golden State ended up winning 51 games. The Golden State's a very good team, but I think the Clippers are, are better, and I think it's going to be a good series, high scoring, too many weapons on the Clippers. And DeAndre Jordan, after I put him as a player who I was very disappointed with, him and Blake Griffin both, it's not so much Blake because Blake had a great year, but in my opinion, DeAndre Jordan finally lived up to his seven feet, extremely athletic status, leading the league in rebounds, and also I think he was second in the league in blocks. I said with his athleticism and size, he should lead the league in rebounds and blocks every year. He finally had a great, true center year this year. So I like the Clippers in that one in six. Rockets versus Trailblazers. This is going to be another close one. But I've always felt that the experienced teams will always overpower the inexperienced. Rockets, not that they're really super experienced, but they're more experienced than the Trailblazers. And I think because of that, the Rockets will win in Seven. Seven games. I think it's going to be a close series. It's going to be a good series, but I think the Rockets will prevail and will go on and win that series. Uh, I'm just going to do the first round in the playoffs. I'm not going to go ahead and go through anything else because I'll do that when we see who wins the next round. So really I have one through four advancing in the West, which is interesting because the West was the conference that was really jam-packed. But in my opinion, that matchup-wise, that's what's going to happen. Now let's go to the East. Let's look at the matchups here. Indiana versus Atlanta. I'm going to be nice and I'm going to say Indiana in five. Really, they should sweep Atlanta. But I'm going to give Atlanta the benefit of the you're a really crappy team. It shocks everyone to out. Um, and I don't know the thing about Atlanta. There's not a lot of talk about that the NBA should change the playoff format. Personally, I, I like the playoff format. I like the divisions. I like the conferences. To me, it makes it better. You're battling with the people who you're going up against the most. You know, you play your divisions four times in the regular season. You know what I mean? Like, you you get your opportunities. A lot of people said, well, this is ridiculous. The Look at the East. Look at the West. It's, it's not balanced. If you look carefully, though, at the final standings, 15 of the top 16 records are playoff teams. So, if you took the top 16 records, teams in the league which is what people proposed with what they would do because you're not going to flip-flop the the, the the conferences only one team would not make the playoffs who's actually making the playoffs and that's the Atlanta Hawks and then the Suns would have made it instead because if you look carefully at all the standings Charlotte would actually be the 16th seed at 43 and 39 and then the first team below them would be the Minnesota Timberwolves at 40 and 42 so really, the only team that's kind of getting shafted out of the playoffs is the Suns, which is understandable. You win 48 games, you should be in the playoffs, but that's just not in the case for the Suns. Um, so really, it's not that big of a deal. Now, the matchups would be completely different because one would play 16. You know, you would see San Antonio versus Charlotte and something like that. So the matchups would be completely different. But when it comes to just actually making the playoffs, when it was all said and done, only one team made the playoffs that would not have made the playoffs if you took the top 16 teams. And that's Atlanta. So I just did my little rant on that. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. I understand it's considered lopsided. But to me, 15 out of the top 16 made the playoffs. So shut the hell up. Seriously. 
people are stupid. People just want to complain. The only people who are allowed to complain are Phoenix Suns fans. If you're not a Phoenix Suns fan, shut your mouth. Okay? Um, but anyway, Indiana in five over Atlanta. Miami versus Charlotte. Miami, I think, will five as well there. I think Charlotte's going to have one game where everything clicks for them and they'll be able to win. Now, Brooklyn versus Toronto. I'm saying Nets in six. Um, look, the Nets, in my opinion, like I said, are the third best team. Third best team in the East. Toronto is a play fantastic this year, but once again, experience always seems to overcome and, and prevail over inexperience, regardless of the talent or regardless of the record. Let's look at the Nets roster. is nothing but experience in the postseason, except for Jason Kidd, but he's been there as a player. Toronto, not one player on that roster, I think, has ever played in a postseason game. Well, that's not true. They have, like, John Salmons and those extra people. But, like, oh, they're main people. Kyle Lowry, no. Jamar DeRozan, no. Like, those guys have never been in a postseason. So, I think what's all said and done, I think the Nets are going to prevail. I think it's going to be a good series. I think it's going to be six games. But I think the Nets will win. I really do. And I think the Nets will win on game six on their home court. The Nets, because they win on their home court. So, that's what I think will happen with the important series. You know, if, if the Nets lose to the Raptors, I'm going to throw things. I'm just going to throw things because that should not happen. But I got Nets in six. And then finally, Chicago versus Washington. Chicago's going to win in, in six. Washington, same thing. Experience over inexperience. Washington's never been there. You know what I mean? So in this case, I got one, two, six, four. And the other one, I got one, two, three, four. I think the playoffs are going to be intense. I think it's going to be exciting. And I'm going to make a bold statement right now that there will not be an Indiana versus Miami Eastern Conference Finals. You have my word. April 18th, Nets Boy says there will not be a Miami versus Indiana Eastern Conference Finals. Either Brooklyn whoa, or Chicago will beat one of those two teams to go into the finals. That's my bold prediction. That's my bold prediction of the playoffs. I think... Chicago could definitely beat Indiana. I think Brooklyn could definitely beat Miami. And I think that it's going to be a great playoffs. There's, to, to me, the only true team that I think is a huge front runner, that's San Antonio. Because I don't think any team can beat San Antonio except for OKC, which beat them in the, in the regular season. So it's going to be really cool to see what happens. I'm super excited. You know, you can tell this whole season I was pretty cool. You know, what a great year this has been. Tons of up and downs. You've seen me write songs. You see me yell at people. You see me talk about people who suck. People who are overrated. You see Jason Kidd being terrible and becoming one of the best coaches in the NBA. You see me with different hats. You see me with sunglasses, no sunglasses. You see me with Seton Hall stuff on. It's been a great year, and so far, it's just we're at the climax, which is the NBA postseason, and I can't wait. And thank you all for who are who are actually been following along. You know, I'm not getting a lot of hits anymore, but I don't care. I still got a consistent amount of people, so I'll thank you again. This is not my last video, even though I'm making it sound like it is. Obviously, the last video won't be until the Nets either get eliminated or win the NBA championship. When that happens, then you'll see my last Nets Boy video. So until then, my next videos will probably be sometime in the middle of the series, probably after the first two games. Um, you'll probably see another Nets Boy episode coming out there for me talking about the Nets series and what's going on. So keep your eyes out for that. Thank you for listening to my season wrap-up video. And um, go Nets. And please do not lose to the Raptors. They better not. They shouldn't. So go Nets. Nets Boy, signing off.